Today's episode is made possible through the continuing support of the lovely and effervescent and very, very kinky Jessica, as well as all the people on the Patreon. Thank you guys for helping out and helping us make this gigantic series of videos. I sincerely and passionately appreciate all that you do to help this happen. Thank you guys. Hi there guys and welcome back to the shop where today we're going to be doing episode 38, which is the J3 encoder data cables. We're going to be working off the red ethernet cable as usual. That's the one we've been hanging out on lately. And now we're on the green pair. So this is really easy. The white wire is going to go to the green with a white stripe. So white with the one with a white stripe. And the yellow wire is going to be going to the straight green wire. So we're gonna begin by untwisting, straightening. Good way to straighten these, a uh, neat little trick to know is make your fingers like this. You wanna have a, like a ring roll bender and you just run down the cable like that and it'll take the wobblies out of your ethernet feeds. This is useful to know if you're making up ethernet cables. So we've got our J3 encoder wire here, which is still a bit long and I'm going to strip that down right off the end of the thing Oh, oh, that's on there. Good. There you go. Okay. And I'm going to take that off. By the way, I want to thank Mr. Cole, who just donated $200 in the middle, uh, in the break between shooting uh, the last video in this one, Mr. Cole just donated $200 all at once even to fund getting a, uh, a live stream camera that we can put over in your perspective. It's, it's going to be out up here above me. We're going to put a PTZ camera so that the people watching the live stream can actually see right up close what I'm doing. Because right now the live stream camera that we're currently using is up behind my back. It's for when I'm working on this bench, which I do a lot, just not in this particular series. So he's helping all of you guys that tune in and watch the live streams to be able to get a better shot and see better of what I'm doing. And I think that's really sweet of him. I think that's a really cool thing to do. And I wanted to call him out on it in the middle of a production video and thank him. So thank you, Mr. Cole, for all the things you do to make all the videos that we make here possible. I really do appreciate it. So let's spin this down. Here's that cool spinner trick again. Done. Okay, so I, I think at a later point in this process, we end up connecting those to ground. I'm not 100%. If we do, cool. If we don't, then I'll just trim them off if they're unused, because it won't matter. But for now, I'm keeping, keeping them in there. So we're gonna grab our yellow and our white and move all three of the other ones back and out of the way. So we're gonna be working with yellow and white and green with a white stripe. And now let's grab some heat shrink. We're gonna want, we're gonna want a big green one, that's for sure. And we're gonna want a yellow and a white. Cause I'm an artist. Now we learned hard lessons with this the last time of not using anything but those strippers. And these are actually working really good at this moment. You gonna do it again? Oh, that's lovely. Okay, the green pair strips lovely. Now we'll strip this pair. Coder wires need a little application of a thumbnail. Okay, so that's in there. Twist this one down. And now we're gonna slide our yellow up our yellow wire. Okay. 
and our white up our white wire. Let those hang out there and I'm going to put a green, a big green, up both green wires and slide that all the way down. And we're going to do a better job than we did last time where I couldn't get it tight enough. Now this is easy because we just grab our yellow, goes on here, and we just twist this around. Now you got to balance how much wire you want to leave in the box, but because if you if you leave too much, you're going to clog up the box with stuff and you might even overfill the box, which is easy to do. But if you cut it too short, your box fill is nice and tight, but it's such a pain to work on. It really sucks having to fight really short little leads. So Six inches per wire is pretty comfortable. As far as needing to slide heat shrink up and stuff like that and just have room to operate. Now I've got, I got like six inches on the one side here and the other side I got like three, but, and, and you can see I'm having a lot more trouble with things off in my right hand and things off in my left. Even though it's the exact same thing, it's just a piece of wire and a heat shrink. All right, so those are good. We'll get the helping hands in here on these. We can, we've got a, got a heat shrink that, or a heat sink that. We'll hold that one with the helping hand. And then I'll grab my other little heat sink tweezers. And these are just protecting us from damaging, or from activating the heat shrink. Okay, so now we've got everything trussed up and held in place. You can see everything on camera. Now I'm gonna get the flux and we'll get a little goop on there. Get a little goop on there. As you can tell, that's a very high precision operation with the flux. Clean our tip, apply a little bit of solder right on there. Solder the connection, another little dab of solder on my iron. Solder the connection and then let it cool. I do like the smell of that. I know you're probably not supposed to breathe it and I'm going to end up with like kids with flippers or something, but I like the smell of it. It's just, I'm not like huffing the stuff, but it's I like it smells like building stuff, making things, productivity and progress. Okay, those are cooled down. Take off our helping hands and our heat sinks. Pull that right out the way. Yeah, we're nice and clean. Bring the yellow down. Bring the white down. They're lined up nice and straight. And then we can shrink these. Okay, so those are good. Straight and true and good. And, and if they're too hot to pinch together to hold where you need them, then they're too hot to run the next piece of heat shrink down. But you can suck the heat right out of them if you grab your heat sink tweezers. Just lay those right on there. Because heat always goes from hot to cold. That's how heat sinks work. So those are cool to the touch. And now I can run this 
over both and it fits and it's good and it's green. It's not easy being green. All right, so now we'll shrink that down. Look at that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's the best one I've done yet. Look at that. That's great. That's a damn good splice. I'm proud of it. All right, that's cool. So see, as you watch this, if you're, if you're smart, you'll watch ahead on the videos from where you're actually at in the building process, because I have to do these things over and over and over, and you develop systems, and you tweak it, and you mess with it, and you get pretty damn good at it after a while. That's cool. So there you go. That's our J3 encoder data connection. I'm proud of that one. I like it. Thank you for hanging out and sharing this moment with me. I hope you guys do as good a job as I do. I hope you do a way better job than I do because you'll watch ahead and see how I'm doing it the fourth or fifth time when I've really got it dialed in and you're doing that back on the first and second time and you'll be way cooler than I am. So learn from my mistakes. Use my learning process to save you time. Thank you guys. I appreciate you watching. And as always, I'll see you next time.